What does it mean to be adaptable in a complex world? Let's see what nature says about it and how we can apply it here. Now, again, it took some transformation for a marine biologist these days to be able to talk to people in the military as I do, people in the Department of Homeland Security, people in business about what nature does. And that came about through my own process of adaptation because what I wanted to do more than anything is study the tide pools of Monterey Bay right there where Ed Ricketts used to work. And I was quite happy doing that um, right up until 9-11 um, where I had family members and friends who were in the Capitol building, in the State Department, and I felt so far removed in these idyllic tide pools that morning uh, from what was going on in Washington that um, <clears throat> the next year I went through a real transformation. And, and adaptation really is about leaving or being forced from your comfort zone. So you can think about these early amphibians coming out of these seas. Now, they were forced out of those seas because there were so many really nasty predators about there, but they also saw an opportunity out on land to exploit new ways of living and became quite successful doing that. Um, that sort of happened to me. Here I am far outside of my comfort zone on Capitol Hill uh, with Miss Solis there. Um, and at the time I came up to work with Miss Solis on, mostly on environmental issues. That was one of her big interests as well as labor issues. Um, neither of those issues were going anywhere in 2002, 2003, right after 9-11. And so I ended up having a lot of time on my hands uh, to kind of look around and observe, essentially do the same thing I do in tide pools. The ecology that I was looking at, of course, wasn't tide pools in, in Washington, D.C., but this new security environment that was popping up everywhere. And what I saw is every day a new monument would get surrounded by Jersey barriers as if they were mushrooms springing up in a fairy circle around them. And every day new metal detectors at a new monument and new guards everywhere. But it very quickly became clear to me how different this ecology was from the ecology of the tide pools or other places like the desert that I was used to poking around in because things didn't change. We got new security measures and then they just didn't change. And I had this kind of aha moment when one morning walking into the house office building, I fumbled to get my keys out of my pocket to put them on the metal detector belt. And this young staffer said to me, oh, don't waste your time taking your keys out of your pocket. Just put your hand over them in your pocket and walk right through. It won't set off the metal detector. <laughs> and I thought, oh my god. If a Capitol Hill staffer to save 20 seconds in the morning has already adapted to these new security measures, how easily could a terrorist adapt to these measures? And that got me thinking about this process of adaptation.